time. Book 17, the Iliad, the light around the body of Patroclus. Brave Menelaus, son of Atreus, who now came to know that Patroclus had fallen and made his way through the front ranks, clad in full armor, to bestride him. As a cow stands, lowing over her first calf, even so did yellow-haired Menelaus bestride Patroclus. He held his round shield and his spear in front of him, resolute to kill anyone who should dare face him. But the son of Perthos had also noted the body, and came up to Menelaus, saying, Menelaus, son of Atreus, draw back, leave the body, and let the bloodstained spoils be. I was the first of the Trojans and their brave allies to drive my spear into Patroclus. Let me, therefore, have my full glory among the Trojans, or I will take aim and kill you. To this Menelaus answered in great anger, By father Zeus, boasting is an ill thing. The pard is not more bold, nor the lion, nor savage wild boar, which is fiercest and most dauntless of all creatures, than are the proud sons of Panthos. Yet Hyperinor did not see out the days of his youth, when he made light of me, and withstood me, deeming me the meanest soldier among the Danans. His own feet never bore him back to gladden his wife and parents. Even so shall I make an end of you too, if you withstand me. Get you back into the crowd, and do not face me, or it shall be worse for you, even a fool may be wise after the event. You of Oris would not listen, and said, Now indeed, Menelaus, shall you pay for the death of my brother, over whom you vaunted, and whose wife you widowed in her bridal chamber. While you brought grief unspeakable on his parents, I shall comfort these poor people if I bring you your head and armor, and place them in the hands of Panthos and noble Brontis. Time is come when this matter shall be fought out and settled for me or against me. As he spoke, he struck Menelaus, fall on the shield, but the spear did not go through, for the shield turned its point. Menelaus then took aim, praying to Father Zeus as he did so. Euphorus was drawing back, and Menelaus struck him about to the roots of his throat, leaning his whole weight on the spear so as to drive it home. The point went clean through his neck, and his armor rang rattling round him as he fell heavily to the ground. His hair, which was like that of the graces, and his locks so deftly bound in bands of silver and gold, were all bedrabbled with blood, as one who has grown a fine young olive tree in a clear space where there is abundance of water. The plant is all promised and though the winds beat upon it from every quarter it puts forth its white blossoms till the blast of some fierce hurricane sweeps down upon it and level it with the ground even so did Menelaus strip the fair youth Euphorus of his armor after he had slain him or as some fierce lion upon the mountains in the pride of his strength fastens on the finest heifer in a herd as it is feeding first he rakes her neck with his strong jaws and then gorges on her blood and entrails dogs and shepherds raise a hue and cry against him but they stand aloof and will not come close to him for they are pale with fear even so no one had the courage to face valiant Melos the son of Atreus would have then carried off the armor of the son of Panthos with ease had not Phoebus Apollo been angry and in the guise of Menezes chief of the Sycions incited Hector to attack him Hector said he you are now going after the horses of the noble son of Atreus but you will not take them they cannot be kept in hand and driven by mortal man save only by Achilles who is son to a mortal mother meanwhile Menelaus, son of Atreus, has bestridden the body of Patroclus, and killed the noblest of the Trojans, Euphorus, son of Panthos, so that he can fight no more. The god then went back into the toil and turmoil, but the soul of Hector was darkened with a cloud of grief. He looked along the ranks and saw Euphorus lying on the ground with the blood still flowing from his wound, and Menelaus stripping him of his armor, on as he made his way to the front like a flame of fire, clad in his leaning armor, and crying with a loud voice. When the son of Atreus heard him, he said to himself in his dismay, Alas, what shall I do? I may not let the Trojans take the armor of Patroclus, who has fallen fighting on my behalf, lest the son of who sees me should cry shame upon me. Still, if for my honor's sake I fight Hector and the Trojans single handed, they will prove too many for me, for Hector is bringing them up in force. Why, however, should I thus hesitate? When a man fights in the sight of heaven with one whom a god befriends, he will soon rue it. Let no denon think ill of me if I give place to Hector, for the hand of heaven is with him. Yet if I could find Ajax, the two of us would fight Hector and heaven too, that we might only save the body of Patroclus or Achilles, son of Peleus. This of many evils would be the last beast. While he was thus in two minds, the Trojans came up to him with Hector at their head. He therefore drew back and left the body, turning about like some bearded lion who is being chased by dogs and men from a stockyard with spears and human cry whereon he is daunted and slinks sulkily off. Even so did Menelaus, son of Atreus, turn and leave the body of Patroclus. When among the body of his men, he looked around for mighty Ajax, son of Telamon, and presently saw him on the extreme left of the fight, cheering on his men and exhorting them to keep on fighting for Phobus Apollo had spread a great panic among them. He ran up to him and said, Ajax, my good friend, come with me at once the dead Patroclus, if so be that we may take the body to Achilles as for his armor. Hector already has it. These words stirred the hearts of Ajax, and he made his way among the front ranks, Menelaus going with him. Hector had stripped Patroclus of his armor and was dragging him off the way to cut off his head and take the body to fling before the dogs of Troy. But Ajax came up with a shield like a wall before him, which Hector drew under the shelter of his men and sprang onto his chariot, giving armor over to the Trojans to take to the city as a great trophy for himself. Ajax therefore covered the body of Patroclus with his broad shield and bestrode him as a lion stands over his whelps that hunters have come upon him in a forest when he is with his little ones. In the pride and fierceness of his strength, he draws his nip throws down till they covered his eyes. Even so did Ajax bestride the body of Patroclus and his side stood Menelaus, son of Atreus, nursing great sorrow in his heart. Then Galactus, son of Hippolochus, looked fiercely at Hector and rebuked him sternly. Hector said he, You make a brave show, but in fight you are sadly wanting a runaway like yourself, has no claim to so great. Think how you may now save your town and citadel by the hands of your own people born in Ilium. 